an awesome savior. Lord, all I can say, we made it through another week safely. Father, continue to just help us to give you praise and thanks. Continue to help us to reach out to you and just praise you and honor you on this praise and worship preparation morning. Father, you are a great God. You sent your son to die on Calvary's cross for us so that we can have life. And all I can say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this preparation day and the Sabbath that is rolling on. Thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. Thank you for the miracles that you have wrought through this week, dear Father. Thank you, dear Lord, for even allowing my wife to eat a little bit of something, dear Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, speak up a little bit, though. I just want to give God thanks for another day. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here for another week. I'm here grateful. Just on the praise and the honor and the glory and the adoration. Just want to tell him much I love him much. I thank him for dying and help his cross for me. For redeeming me from sin. Oh yes. Let's call the name this morning. He is worthy. He is awesome. And there is none like unto him. And to him be all the glory this morning. Thank him for each and every one on the crown line and for the Morning after morning. The morning that Oh, give God the praise. Oh, yes. Amen. Father, thank you so much for waking me up this morning. I want to give thanks to you, Father. And thank you for your goodness and your mercy towards me. And thank you for my children. Thank you for my friends and relatives. Thank you for everyone that uh, come on the prayer line, Father. I pray with the whole person, my brothers and sisters overseas. Brothers and sisters here in Georgia or wherever, bless each and every one in a very special way, Father. Bless uh, Brother Michael for uh, oh, yes. starting us on our way this morning. Father, I'd like to give you honor and glory for everything that's already done, for dying up on the cross for me and all of us, for the world, Father. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for having a place to stay. I lay my head down. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy that you've given each and every one. And I just want to thank you for everything that you already done. The good things and the sad things and the bad times, Father. You had me go pick up my cross and walk, Father. Thank you so much for everything that God has done. It's in the name of bless and for the name of Jesus, and bless the Sabbath that's coming. Uh, thank you for it, for the rest. We need it, Father. Thank you for uh, the goodness and the mercy. Oh, yes. And forgive us for all our sins, Father. Thank you. We thank you for everything. For the birds and bees and just breathing, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just give our prayers and our thanks to the reigning Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master. Amen. Amen.
All right, Sanchez. All right, um, Sister Patricia. Yes, let me you take this opportunity to thank God for what He has done to me. All the since we started this week up to today, which is the preparation day, Good Friday. I thank God that He has allowed us uh, to be with good health. All the children they are doing well. Today is the final day that they are finishing their exams for uh, school because they are going to become too long all day, uh, short half term. So pray for them, and I'm happy that God is continuing pressing us. He pressed us with the, our county was having a project and was having a project of at least helping people who have orphanages. And I thank God that I was one among one of them, whereby the commissioner's wife uh, tried to uh, fight for me so that I can get some hands. And I thank God for that. I received five hands from the project, and I'm happy that the chief. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, Sister Patricia, you go ahead, give your testimony, and then sing a song, okay? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. Uh, I give thanks to God for this day, for everything. And uh, I am happy to make this testimony. Uh, uh, very sick last day uh, with my hair, my my eyes, but now I'm getting better. I give thanks to God for that. Amen. And I want to thank God for, for my niece, my elder sister's daughter. She is very sick. She is very sick. I don't know how to explain it. And I want more prayer for her. That. Uh, God may have mercy, and I pray that she also get better uh, next days. I pray for our prayer line, our our all our sisters and brothers who are not feeling well. More prayer for for them, and more prayer for Brother Michael and his wife. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 All right, go ahead and sing. Yes. Tanya Benyen Angegame Toki Jeho Maya Benke Toma Membo.
He leadeth me. Praise the Lord. All right. God is good. All right. So Joshua just came on. Go ahead, Joshua. Give a testimony. answers prayers and I give God a praise and thanks for that if it wasn't for God's God answering my prayers I don't even know where I would be right now but I thank him I thank him I thank him yes praise the Lord hallelujah I thank God for my family my beautiful wife and all my children I thank God for providing for them, even though the enemy is constantly busy trying to do all kind of crazy stuff. But all I can say, God knows how to intercept the enemy and block him. And I uh, pray for Jada. I pray, dear Lord, for all who come in contact with me, all the people. There's so many people that God has brought in my life. And all I can say is praise the Lord, hallelujah, that I can be an example for many. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, Father God, let the words of my mouth be yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So anyone knows the topic of this week's lesson? It is wisdom for righteous living. Wisdom for righteous living. And I look at this, um, this topic and I said, God wants us to live right. But he has to be the one to give us that wisdom to live right. I don't know if I'm making sense right there. Because sometimes we may see someone flourishing or have a big house, a nice car, and all that they need on earth. But are they living righteous? And that's where the important part comes in. God wants us to live right. And we need to pray to God, ask him to help us to live right. All right? So the first question I have um, is, does God want us to be righteous only on the Sabbath day? Does God wants us to be righteous every day. But unfortunately, some people, those who go to church on Sunday, 
they 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 be righteous on Sunday, and then for the rest of the week they cut up, and then they'll be righteous again on Sunday. All right, God wants us to be righteous all the time. It should be a lifestyle. All right. Who do we get ultimate wisdom from? I can bet we got it from Sister Cynthia, right? We get some wisdom from Cynthia, but uh, Sister Cynthia, but ultimate. We, we do get wisdom, but God does the ultimate. Wisdom. Praise the Lord. So that's the simple answer. We don't get ultimate wisdom from human beings. No matter how many colleges or universities you have been to, ultimate wisdom, the one that teach us how to live right, it comes directly from God. And that's one of the reasons we take time out to read the Bible every day because that's where we find ultimate wisdom. Does God's grace provides us with forgiveness? And give us new heart or give us a new heart? And the answer is yes. It's because of God's grace why we are right here doing what we're doing. Why we are able to survive. Why we are able to, to live. It's because of whose grace? God's grace. It says is keeping God's law a bunch of rules we must follow? Is keeping God's laws a bunch of rules that we must follow? Well, everybody has rules to follow. I mean, yes, we have to do All right. The so, so I understand. Everyone has rules that we have to follow. But... Yeah. If we, I'm, I want to, what I, what I want to explain, if we look, yeah, if we look at God's laws as a bunch of rules to follow, what will happen, it will become legalistic. <laughs> We're, okay, it's just like the government put down laws and if we break them, they throw us in prison. God's laws are not like that. God's laws are laws of love. And we obey him because we fall in love with him. It is a love relationship that teach us how to love God and to love our fellow man. When we look at it from that point of view and we observe God's law from that point of view, we don't even worry about sinning. Because just like how you will not try to hurt someone that you love, it becomes like that. Where we will not try to break God's commandment because we're going to hurt him. All right? And we will not try to, to hurt our fellow men because we love them. I hope that's making sense to you. <clears throat> will Satan tempt those who are doing their best to live a righteous life? Yes, he always. He, he's tempting both those who are trying to live a righteous life and those who are not even trying to live a righteous life. But he tempts those who are trying to connect with God more. So let us keep our hands in God's hands. All right? So that we might not sin against him. This section says, Your word I have hidden in my heart. Whose word we need to hide in our hearts? God's word, Jesus. God's words. And the scripture says when we hide God's words in our hearts, we will not sin against him. Right. And that's what's so important. When we hide his words in our hearts, we will not sin against them, him. It says, how many of us are doing our best to hide God's words in our hearts? And I'm hoping all of us, 
are doing that. And the way you, we, we get up and we read the Bible every morning. And that's one way to try to hide God's words in our hearts. Praise the Lord. We read his words on the prayer line every morning. Praise the Lord. It says, how can we hide God's words in our hearts? How can we hide God's words in our hearts? Anybody? By, praise the Lord. By, re, by praying, by reading, and meditating upon his words. By praying, by reading his words, and by meditating upon his words. That's how we're going to keep God's words in our hearts. Praise the Lord. How many of us do all we can to walk in the light of God? And these are practical questions that we have to ask ourselves. Am I walking in the light of God? Is our lives a living sacrifice to God? It should be. Yes. It should be a living sacrifice. In other words, when someone sees us, they should see the light of God in us. Praise the Lord. And you can read Psalms 119 from 1 to 16, and that will help you to understand some of the things that are questions that I just asked you. It says, teach us, this section says, teach us to number our days. And uh, how long is 1,000 years in the sight of God? It's like a blink of an eye. And it says 1,000 years is like a, die, a day, it's like a day in God's sight. Yes, so when, when we hear that the world is about 6,000 years old, it's like six days in God's sight. Yes, so we are in the 7,000 7, year of the world today, now. So we never know. Seven is a perfect number. Maybe God just come back in the 7,000 year dispensation. We don't know. But we should always be ready. That's why it says, teach us to number our days. Every day that we live, we should stay connected with God. We should keep on living for God, not just on Sabbath, but every day of the week, every second of the day, we should live for God. If it were not for God's grace, would we be alive today? No, we would not be alive today. All right? We, because we are like a plant that sprang up in the morning and withered down in the evening. That's how we are. But because of God's grace, we are blessed to be alive today. Praise the Lord. It says, who is our shelter and refuge? God is. God is. It's not the rooftop that we have over our houses. God is our shelter. He is our ultimate shelter. Praise ye the Lord. I give God a praise for being so good to us. Even when we have messed up, he is still good to us. And this section here in Tuesday says, the Lord's tests. And I tell you, I don't know. How many of us love to take tests? No, don't like to take tests. Nobody. I don't even like to do a blood test. I don't even like to do a blood. Anytime most people hear about tests, they go through some kind of phobias. But have 
God tested his people Israel? Have God tested his people Israel? And the answer is yes. All right. It says, did Israel pass or failed the test? They failed the test. And not only Israel, but I can speak for myself. Let me ask a question. It says, have God tested us? Yes, he has. Yes, from time to time, he will allow us to go through a test. But we must remember it's just a test. And the big question is, have we passed all the tests that we went through? Or have we failed some? Oh, have mercy. <laughs> yes, when we go and read Psalms 81, 7 and 8, Psalms 95, 7 to 11, Psalms 105, 17 to 22, we will find out that God allowed his children to go through many tests. They failed some some people pass some. Just like us today, we fail some tests that God has put us through, and we may pass some of the tests that God has put us through. Have many of us, how many of us have given up on God because he did not answer our prayers Well, I'm telling you, I I have give I have given up on God before, because I believe He was He was coming through just too slow. But I'm here to attest that I only put myself in trouble by giving up on Him. So I would advise myself and others that you don't give up on God. Hold on to Him. In spite of, all right? And in Wednesday section, it says, how many of us have prayed and asked God to keep us away from the schemes of the devil? Yes, sir. We need to pray and ask God to keep us away from the schemes of the devil. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you, the devil is busy. But should the devil come and tempt us, when we get a chance, read Psalms 141. It will help us to know that God is right there with us, helping us to overcome the temptations of the devil. How many of us have asked God to watch over the door of our lips. Yes, <laughs> Boy, I tell you. I tell you, I tell you. There are some stuff that comes out of our mouth sometimes. And we, we turn around and said like Urkel, Did I do that? Did I say that? <laughs> yes, we have to be careful because the devil will tempt us to say the wrong things and to do the wrong things. But when we stay connected with God, even when the devil tempt us, we are able to overcome his temptations. How many of us prayed and asked God to help us do the right things and to say the right words. I, if, you, if we have not prayed and asked God to help us to say the right words, because sometimes we say we are children of God, but some words that comes out of uh, some words that come out of our mouths, some things that we say, some of our actions, 
Oh, have mercy. Help us, Jesus. Sure enough does not show us that we are children of God. But if we pray, that's what is the writer in this section says. If we pray to God and ask him to take away the delicacies of the wicked one. Hallelujah. We will make it. We will make it. Praise the Lord. How many of us are very tempted by the things of this world? How many of us are very tempted by the things of this world? I don't know about you, but I God is helping me to see. Yeah, he's help. He's helping me to see the things of heaven. But before, I was fully tempted with the things of this world. But I have to give him thanks and praise for working with me. So that I don't desire all out the things of this world. Because all the things of this world will one day be totally destroyed. That's what the Bible says. Read Psalms 141. Praise the Lord. It says, Blessed, blessings of righteous living. When we live right <coughs> in the sight of God, will we be blessed? Yes. Um, does the blessing or do the blessings always come while we are on this earth the way how it is? No. God, look, God blesses us when He goes. Well, he comes right on time when you when you least expect it. Yes, we will receive blessings from God in this world that we are living in now, but the. The ultimate true blessings, the ultimate true blessing, notice I repeated that, it will be when Christ returns and eradicates sin. That's when we will get the 100% true blessing. It is, it is in the future, but he will bless us even now, praise the Lord. It says, will we experience blessings when we live right in the sight of God? And the answer is yes. yes. And you read Psalms 1, and it will tell you about how God planted you by the rivers up, and, and how, it, you know, it will tell you a lot about heaven. And how he prepare, he's preparing a place for us. That's where our ultimate blessings will be. Yes. How many of us are sharing? Yes. All right. And sharing an uninterrupted. How many of us are sharing an uninterrupted intimate relationship with God? All of us should. Of us. Sometimes, unfortunately, we do not. Because the devil find a way to sneak into our lives. But we all should be sharing that uninterrupted, intimate relationship with God. It is important that we do just that. Are the things of this world uh, still stealing us away from the Lord or from God? Ooh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. It says, if we are given a choice to choose between wisdom and happiness, which one would we choose? Praise the Lord. You're a smart lady. 
Yes, we choose wisdom because when we, and especially the wisdom of Christ, when we get the wisdom of Christ, it will teach us how to get happiness. And I'm not saying you should not be happy. But when we get the wisdom of God, we will learn how to be happy. Even when we are in pain, we will experience. As a matter of fact, let me ask this question. It says, can God's wisdom bring us true happiness? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Praise the Lord. And it can also give us never ending joy. joy. And wh why I said that is because when we look at the situations that goes on in our lives, for you, for instance, Sister Judy, cancer hit you. But does that take away the joy that God has given you deep down? No. Because we learn that this world that we are living in, it, the way how it is, is not our final home. The devil is going to beat us up. The devil is going to, you know, things because of sin, sickness is going to come. You think I want to look at my wife the way how she is and don't want to touch me? You know, no, it's difficult. But that does not take away my joy. That does not take away my joy. And let that be your motto. Let that be your motto, or motto, all right? Not to let anything in this world take away the joy that God gives. We're going to go through stuff. Like the psalmist says, he went through stuff. The devil is going to get him and tempt him. He's going to fail like Israel failed. But one thing I can say let us hold on to God no matter what. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Psalms 19.14. Praise ye the Lord.